The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. There are noises in the night. Noises that are only heard in the stillness of the night. Sighs and groans and creaks and moans. And they are made by no human voice. And they issue from no human throat. What are they? Why does the floor squeak when no one is stepping on it? Is it the house itself? Are there times when a house can become tired and restless and frightened, just like a human being? Who knows? Russell. Huh? Oh, who's that? It's me, Cora Jean. Cora Jean? Yes, Russell. Cora Jean. But you can't be standing here. Why not? Because you're dead. I'm not dead. You are. You have to be dead. I killed you. Are you sure you killed me? You. You're dead. I hit you. Picked up the wrench. I'm here, Russell. And I hit you with it. And then... You see for yourself, Russ. And then... I buried you. Yes, Russ. What do you want me to tell you? Our mystery drama, How Quiet the Night, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars William Redfield. Society, said someone or other not too long ago, is becoming terribly democratic. Why some of the most vulgar people are in it. Yes, society has gone down in recent years. But if such things bother you, take heart. One place where society is still society, where breeding and position still matter, is in the home of Aeneas Malone, whose blood is of the most cerulean blue. And yet, Aeneas understands the implications of noblesse oblige. His daughter will marry Mr. Russell Porter, a young man of most humble origins. As a matter of fact, the party at the Malone mansion this evening is for the purpose of announcing the engagement. <laughs> my, my friends, may, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. <clears throat> I have a most happy announcement. My daughter, Sybil, has informed me that she is in love with Mr. Russell Porter. And I see no reason why they should not be married in the spring. Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> Congratulations, my boy. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, Daddy, I'm so happy. Oh, come on, Russ. I want you to hold me in your arms. <laughs> and the only way you can do it right now is to dance. Well, now, now, Sybil, my dear, so many people are waiting to wish you well. Don't neglect your guests. And besides, I want to talk with Russell. Oh, now, Daddy, you're not going to be the stern parent. Oh, no, 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 no. It's too late for that. Uh, may I borrow Russell for just a moment? Only for a moment. Russell? Yes, sir. A glass of champagne, Russell? Oh, yes, thank you, sir. Well, I'm very happy for Sybil. At first, I was, uh, well, apprehensive, Russell. After all, your family... Well, what about my family, sir? Well, it was one we'd never heard of. <laughs> what you're trying to say is you were afraid Sybil would be marrying beneath her station? Precisely. Uh, baby, don't, don't be insulted. Why not? Because these prejudices of mine really do no one any harm. Uh, what really counts is the man himself. I uh, had you investigated. You... 
Now, see here... Now, 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 don't get into a temper about it. One day you will have a daughter, too. <clears throat> well, you come from very poor but very honest, hard-working stock, which is what my stock was five, six generations ago. You're hard-working, ambitious, and sincere. Well, thank you. I want you to quit your job and come in with me. Oh, no, no. I'm doing very well at Kennedy and Company. Well, you do better at Aeneas Malone, Incorporated. I don't think so. Why not? Well, you call all the shots. I'd be nothing but a glorified office boy. That's true. <laughs> you, you admit it. Oh, yes, yes. But meanwhile, you'd learn every facet of the business. My answer is no. Well, you're a fool. The business has to go to you eventually. Why not learn how to run it now? Well, I... Oh, I'll get on your nerves a great deal of the time. But one thought should be enough to sustain you no matter how rough the going. And what's that? Well, just keep reminding yourself, after all, <laughs> I can't live forever. Well. They've all gone home. How alone at last. May I have this dance? What did Daddy have to say to you? He wants to take me into business. How wonderful. I guess I'll just have to outlast him. Oh, he's not really so bad, my darling. How bad would you say he is? Not bad at all. You see, he's... Well, he's obsolete. Why? Because he's a man of principle. Such people are rare these days. Yes. I suppose so. You're a man of principle, too. A man of deep convictions, and that's why I fell in love with you. Ah, now the truth is coming out. You're a man of ideals, and that's what I dreamed of. A man who can be trusted, a man of his word. Oh, now I know why I get these headaches. My halo is on too tight. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. Oh, Sybil, I'm just an ordinary guy, and I hit it lucky. It's like winning a sweepstakes ticket. Oh, I love you so much. And I love you, Sybil, darling. Ah, look. I have one request to make. Anything. I'll work for your father. But we won't live here. Oh, of course not. We have to be on our own. I have an apartment. I love your apartment. All right. Then it's settled. Oh, you see, that's a forecast of our life together. That's how quickly and completely and happily we'll solve every question that comes up. Oh, Oh, they stopped playing. What do you mean? The music has stopped. What are you saying? I hear it. Oh, and it's so beautiful. How can you hear the music? You see, they're putting away their instruments. Oh. You heard them playing? Well... Darling, do you hear things? Sybil, this is our music. Played at our engagement party. I think I'll hear it for the rest of my life. Hello, Russell. Cora Jean. Yes, Cora Jean. Well, what are you doing here? Didn't think I'd find you. Well, I... I, I... And that's why you went to New York. No, 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 no. It's just that You were I... supposed to go to Chicago, remember? Well, I couldn't find a decent job in Chicago. Oh, oh. And that's why you went to New York? Yes, sure. Why didn't you let me know? I, uh... I intended to, but... Uh... It's been four months. Cora Jean, I... And now I see. You're engaged to marry someone. Well, it, Do you it's... think I'm a... Fool. No, no. You took the money so you could go on ahead and find a job and get an apartment and send for me. And we'd be married. You never went to Chicago. You went straight to New York. You had a job all lined up, a fantastic job, and you never told me. Look, I, I'm sorry. You were here three weeks, and you ran into this society girl, and now you're set for life, aren't you? Cora Jean, I'm sorry. You've already said that. You better find something else. Well, it happens. You fall in love, you fall out of love. You don't control it. No. No. Why, it's... Uh, you could have met someone, suddenly. Oh, tell me more. Well, I... Well, what can I tell you? The truth. Well, you see the truth. I'm here. I'm here in New York. And why am I here? Because I hate Benton's Corners. 
I hate everything it stands for. I, I hate small towns and small town people and small town horizons and, and small town attitudes. Oh, right. I get the point. I had to get out of there. Out of there to a place where I could become somebody, realize my potential, and... And so I... Well, I used you. I... I pretended to fall in love with you. Well, I didn't pretend to fall in love with you. I'm sorry. I played for keeps. I'm sorry. You say you're sorry. One more time and I'll scream. All right, you asked for it. I needed money. Money so I could get out of there. Money so I could establish myself here. So you took mine. I'll pay it back, Cora Jean. I'll pay it back with interest. Oh, I see. And... And will that make us even? What do you want? Call me a cheat? A scoundrel? Whatever you call me is true, as far as you're concerned. Cora Jean, I... I it's hard for me to say this, but... It's over. It wasn't hard for you to say it. I thought it came out rather easily. I'll give you your money back. I don't want the money. What do you want? You. I just told you. I don't love you. It doesn't matter. I want you whether you love me or not. Oh, that's crazy. I'm also going to have a baby. What? You want me to repeat it? No, no. No, that... that. No, but that's impossible. No, it isn't. Well, Russell... Look, you you can't have a baby. You, you should No. I'll pay for no. it. No. No. You can't hold that baby as a sword over my it's head. It's your baby. I'll deny it. Oh, yes, I suppose you would. But everyone in Benton's Corners knew about you and me. You couldn't prove a thing in a court of law. Oh, God. It's funny. I could only think of this kind of talk as something that would take place in a nightmare. I pray that's what I'm having now. A nightmare. And maybe I can wake up. And we'll be back home. And that nothing has happened. Cora Jean, look. It's over. Now... I'm not happy about it. I'll pay whatever I'll have to. It's your baby. He'll need his father. How many times have I told you you could never prove that in a court of law? Oh. Hello? Darling? Oh, is something the matter? Oh, no, no, no. I just, uh, uh, nothing. Oh, I called to see if you got home safely. Yes, 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 I did. Just fine. Oh, I love you so Give her my regards. What was that? Uh, what was what? I, I could have sworn I heard somebody say something. Oh, darling, now you're the one who's hearing things. Tell me you love me. Oh, I... I do. Well, say it, Russell, darling, say it. I do. Go ahead and say it. It comes so easily to you. Did I hear a voice? A voice? No, I... Oh, uh, oh, it must be the radio. Will I see you tomorrow? Well, why, why, Sure. Are you sure that you're all right, my oh, darling? Oh, I'm first rate. I, I, I'm first rate, Sybil. Just, uh, I don't know, maybe a little tired. <laughs> so am I. Well, you get your rest. Good night, my darling. Good night. Well, Russell, what are you going to do about me? I'll see that you have all the money you need. I told you I want you, Russell. But it's impossible. No, it isn't. You still haven't answered my question. Cora Jean... What you... are you going to do about me? What? What is he going to do? He's engaged to one of the richest girls in the country who is madly in love with him. He has an opportunity to take over one of the wealthiest corporate enterprises in the world. And suddenly, a face from the past arrives to crumble this glorious opportunity to dust. It's quite a problem. A typical problem for a second act, which I shall bring to you in just a few moments. say that only the truly ruthless can achieve real success. To win requires an intense single-mindedness, a complete dedication to one's own interest, and a willingness to move forward regardless of what the price might be to others. 
All his life, Russell Porter has yearned for success. And now that it is within his grasp, we're about to find out how badly he really wants it. What are you going to do about me, Russell? I'm offering you a practical way out. I'm being reasonable. Reasonable? Look, what happened between us happened. It never would have happened if... if I... if I didn't believe you were in love with me. You lied to me. It wasn't a lie. I meant it. At the time, but, but, but time passes. Four months? People can change in four seconds. You are going to marry me, Russ. I keep telling you, you can't prove it. And I keep telling you, I don't have to prove it. If I take you to court, there'll be enough publicity, enough scandal. Oh, do you think Mr. Blue-Blooded Aeneas Malone is going to hold still for no, it? No, 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 it doesn't matter. She'll stand by me. Sybil will. Oh, I don't know the old gent, but I've seen his picture. He cut her and you off without a cent. Well, you know that's true. And there goes the whole thing. You're only after her for her money. That's a lie. That's all you want from a woman. That's all you wanted from me. It's just that she has more. Okay, okay, let's cut through it. Look, just settle for what you can get. And I'm going to be generous. After, after all, I... I do like you, Cora Jean. Oh, really? How do you behave towards people you hate? You can be a rich woman. You can raise the kid. Oh, don't use the word kid. All right, all right. You, 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 you could raise the child easily, without problems. You, you'd have servants. You could send him to the, to the best schools. I, I'd see to it that he had the best opportunities. And as for you, you'd have money. You could move around, attract a terrific guy. You could get married to someone who would really love you. Oh, Cora Jean, the more I think about it, I... You know, it's strange. I, I, I think it's all happened for the best. You... You are incredible. You mean... You mean you'd throw all this away? I want you. Okay. Take me back with you to Benton's Corners. Take me back to where I'll suffocate to death. The air is like wine. And I'll go back to my job, teaching school to ignorant, vacuous little... When are we going home, Russ? Are you out of your mind? No, but you are out of yours. Do you want to live with a man who hates you? It's a temporary madness. It will pass. It was, the way she said it, the way she looked at me, in that calm, quiet manner of hers, that schoolteacher pose, as if I were one of her unruly students, and I saw my whole life before me. We would be together day and night, days we would teach school at Benton Corners High, where at least part of the time I could avoid her, but at night, we'd be home home in one of those suffocating tract houses on a suffocating half-acre plot with a suffocating mortgage. I couldn't breathe in Benton's corners. And then, without even thinking, I knew what I was going to do. Why, why had I suddenly decided without even going through the thought process? Why was the answer right in my mouth before my brain even had time to formulate the question? Let's go home, Cora Jean. What? Well, that's what you came here for, to convince me. All right, you convinced me. It's a temporary madness. Let's go. Get your coat. Now? This minute? Yes. We'll get in the car, drive all night, and be back in Benton's Corners by noon tomorrow. But don't you want to say goodbye to her? No. I, I know what it is to be left. Oh, Russell, I, I feel sorry for her. It can't be helped. But you can't just disappear. I'll write her a letter. Come on. Let's go. If we're going. I heard the news on the radio about the engagement. And you know what I did? I didn't say a word. No, not to anyone. I just packed an overnight bag and I walked to the bus stop and I got on and left. I don't think anyone even saw me go. Russ... Yes? You're not listening to a single word. I am. You'll be happy. I'm happy now. No, I mean really happy. Oh, Russ, you're really a small-town boy. It's what you want. That's right. It's what I want. And I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> no, no, you don't, Russ. Not, not now. Right now, you hate me. Right now, you're like a little boy who's being punished. But in a while... You'll see I'm right. She 
she kept on babbling, and I kept driving. I had no intention of going back to Benton's Corners. I had no desire to marry her. All I needed was a lonely, deserted stretch of road. I didn't even have to think it out. It was all in my head. It was in the books I'd read, the great classic books. An American Tragedy by Dreiser. The Red and the Black by Stendhal. I was one of their heroes. The young man whose path to success is being blocked by a woman he no longer loves and no longer wants. And there's only one thing he can do about it. Only one thing. Why are we stopping here, Russ? Oh, I'm uh, worried about that knocking sound in the engine. I hope it's just a loose fan belt. This is really the middle of nowhere. Well, you might as well get out and stretch your legs. All right. It'll be hours before we come to a place where we can stop. Now, just let me get at that hood. Oh, the air is so pleasant. Ah, yes, yes, just what I thought. The belt's loose. I think I've got a wrench in the back. So quiet the night. So still the stars, so silent the world below. So, you say the rest of it, Russell. Go ahead. Russell! <clears throat> so quiet the night. Yes, it was a quiet night. And she was dead. I was rather surprised at how easy it is to kill someone. How fragile. Just a few sharp blows and and it's over. It was wild country. I dragged her body into the woods, dug the hole, and I buried her. And then, well, what else can I tell you? I went home. And when I got home, I began to worry. The whole thing had been done without thinking. Suppose someone had seen us, but no, no one had seen us. I knew everything was going to be all right. I just knew it. Darling? Russell, darling? Hmm? Oh, uh, yes, dear. What? What is it? Well, first of all, shall I pour you another cup of tea? Oh, no. No, thank you, dear. Secondly... You must give me your list. What list? The list of people you want to invite to the wedding. Oh. Oh, that list. Yes, dear. Oh, well, Sybil, I, I was thinking about... I, I don't want to invite anyone. But this is your wedding, too. Well, darling, my folks are all dead. I I, I have no real friends. I, I haven't been here long enough to make any. Oh, but surely back home... Oh, and... I had no real friends there either. It's one of the reasons I left. Well, there must be someone you like, someone who was kind. Well, yes, yes, perhaps one or two. But you see, I'm, I'm sure they'd... Well, they'd feel awkward, uh, out of place. Russell, may I ask you something? Anything. Why did you stop teaching school? Oh, I don't know. I suppose I wanted the adventure and the excitement of business. Oh, I'm not so sure you do, Russell. At heart, you're a romantic, a teacher. You're wrong. Well, if you ever change your mind... Change my mind about what? Well, about being a stockbroker in Daddy's office. If you should ever want to go back to the classroom... Never. Well, even if you should want to go back to Benton's Corners. What are you saying? Whatever you want is all right with me. Darling, don't ever say another word about going back to... to the sticks. Oh, but life is so peaceful, so enriching there... So quiet the night, so still the stars, so silent the world below. No, wait, wait. What are you saying? Oh, it's a poem. Where? Where did you... Oh, it's so sad. I, I was reading in the paper. A girl was murdered. Oh. Murdered? Who? Oh, I don't even remember. Oh, it's such a terrible thing. Someone had killed her and buried her body in the woods and... Some hunters. Oh, I don't even want to talk about it. Uh, what about the, uh... What about the poem? Oh, well, I, I guess the reporter was looking for human interest. It turns out that the girl was a poet. Yes? Well, I, I mean, she taught school. 
but she was a poet, and they printed the poem. So quiet the night, so still the stars, so silent the world below. Uh, dearest, I'm, I have to be going. Well, so soon? I thought we'd play golf. I know, I know, but I, I, I have things to clear up at the office. Well, see you tonight. Tonight and every night. All right. They found her body. Maybe I should have dug it deeper, but what's the difference? There, there was nothing that could tire to me. No evidence, no proof. Right now is the crucial moment. Right now is the time to remember that I must not panic. I must be calm, relaxed, and in complete control. I have nothing to fear. Nothing. Nothing at all. Just a moment. Evening, Russ. Maybury. Sheriff Maybury. Mind if I come in, Russ? Oh, well, sure. I, uh, I, I mean, of, of course. Yes, of course, come in. Thanks. Um, sit down. Thanks. Well, how are you, Sheriff? Oh, about the same. Russell, Cora Jean Buxton's been killed. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I, I read about it in the paper. Oh, shame. She was a lovely girl. Oh, yes, yes. Weren't you two, uh, sort of engaged? Well, not really. It was just one of those things. Which things? Well, you know how it is. I was the only single male teacher in the high school. If She was the only woman teacher who was single, and we both liked each other. We certainly got along, so people thought... To... Yeah, people sure did. Well, it's like, you know, a situation seems logical, so you kind of take it for granted. I mean... So many people thought it would make sense for Cora Jean and me to get married that they that they honestly believed it was going to happen. And uh, wasn't it? Oh, no. Wasn't there talk Cora Jean had given you her life savings to go to New York and get established and then send for her? I can't imagine the basis for any such talk. Well, the fact is she did withdraw all her money from the bank the day before you left town. Well, that doesn't mean she gave it to me. No, I guess it don't. Sheriff, what is it you want to see me about? I want to talk to you about Cora Jean's murder. Well, what would I know about it? Why, you know more about it than anybody else in the whole world, Russell. Why do you say that? Because you killed her. They're a plain-spoken group, these folks from Benton's Corners. When they've got something on their minds, they say it. But how does Sheriff Mabry know what exists to link our man Russell with the crime? He was careful not to leave any clues. Well, I'll give you a hint. Perhaps it's not something he left with her. It could be something she left with him. And we'll examine that when I return in just a moment with Act Three. Life was so simple and yet so rewarding for young Russell Porter. One of the wealthiest heiresses in the city of New York fell deeply in love with him. She not only has money... She is breathtakingly beautiful. So, suppose he did have to commit murder to protect his investment. Wasn't this worth it? And what could have gone wrong? He was so careful. Sheriff Mabry, how can you say I killed Cora Jean? It's the truth, Russ. You don't have one single shred of proof. Oh, there's plenty of proof. Such as? Well, for one thing, she was going to have a baby. It wasn't mine, and no one can prove it. She gave you that money. No, no, wait. She may have taken it from the bank, but no one can prove that she gave it to me. As a matter of fact, that's why she might have been killed. Don't you see? For the money. $5,000 is a lot. How would you know it was $5,000? Oh, well, well, she told me. She told me once. Yes, yes, that's what she had. She came here to New York to see you. But she wasn't killed in New York. She was killed way out in the country, halfway between... Yeah, halfway between here and Benton's Corners. Okay, all right. Well, so she was coming to New York for, for whatever reason. And, and someone killed her for the money. No. 
How can you say no? Because she was coming from New York when she was killed. How can you hope to prove it? She was riding in a car with somebody. Okay. Then that's the somebody who killed her. She had already been to New York. She'd come here to see you. You said you'd take her home. You told her some kind of lie. You were bound back for Benton's Corners. And the reason I say that is her body was found on the north side of the road. That's the way you were headed. You wouldn't have killed her and then carried her across the highway to bury her. Where is your proof for all this, Sheriff? The kind of proof do I need? Facts, evidence, witnesses. Russell, you know you did it. Now it's up to you to do the manly thing and confess. Oh, you're crazy. Russell, I'm giving you a chance. A chance? A chance to know peace. You'll never have any as long as you live. You'll see her face. You'll hear her voice. Sheriff, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. You are not going to railroad me for a murder I never committed. Tell that to Cora Jean, Russ. Cora Jean is dead. Well, you'll see her, Russ. Like I said, you'll see her and hear her. She was quite a girl, Russ. Why did you kill her? But I didn't, Sheriff. I did... It's oh, like what's the you use? say, Russ, I don't have the evidence and the witnesses, but any time you want to come back and take your medicine, just give me a call, eh? Well, I gotta be going. Think about it, Russ. What was there to think about? Mayberry. What did he know? What could he know? Nothing. He was only making some shrewd guesses. He had no evidence. He's trying to frighten me and get me to lose control. Well, I won't. I'm in the clear. I must not panic. Russ? Russ? What? What is it, Cora Jean? After you went home last night, I wrote a poem. Would you like to hear? Sure. So quiet the night, so still the stars, so silent the world below. Cora Jean. Cora Jean. Oh, it was a dream. Just a dream. Oh, for a moment I thought... What did you think? Cora Jean? Yes, Russell. Cora Jean, it... It can't be. I hear your voice. Yes. But you're dead. You're dead. I always wanted you, Russell. Because you and I are so right for each other. No. No, this is mad. This is mad. I, I'm dreaming. No, I'm dreaming. Russell, you're awake. Let me read you the poem. I don't want to hear it. So quiet the night. So still the stars... So silent shut the up. world. I said, shut up. I've got to get hold of myself. I've got to keep tight control. Can't let my mind go. I know, I know. I'm, I'm going to have a little trouble with my conscience. Now that's to be expected. After all, murder. And that's what it was. Of course, I had no choice. I, I had to. All right, I'll, I'll have some bad nights. It, but it'll go away. The thing to remember is not to panic. Take a deep breath. Collect your thoughts and... Uh... Russell. Yes. Yes, Cora Jean. I'm ready for you. I can handle my conscience. I can handle you. You children, excuse me, I have to mingle. Yes, Daddy. Oh, how he'll ever top this, I don't know. There have been benefit performances and benefit performances, but never one like this. Are you enjoying the show, darling? Oh, sure. Sure, of course. It's just that you seem so distracted. Do you think so? Uh, maybe I'm distracted. By what? Oh, that, that poem just keeps running through my head. So quiet the night, so still the stars. Um, now, why should that poem... Oh, I think of that poor murdered girl. Darling, you can't let your mind dwell on morbid things. Oh, you're right, you're right. 
But why can't I forget Look, the intermission's almost over. Let's go inside. Let's enjoy the play. <laughs> it's really funny. Really funny. So quiet the night. So still the stars. Russell? Yes? I wrote a new poem. Do you want to hear it? Of course, Cora Jean. I always want to hear you. No. No, no, no. This is the same dream. Why do you say it's a dream? Because, because... Because I'm dead? You're dead. Yes. You are dead. That doesn't matter. I don't have to be alive for you to hear me. I won't crack. I won't. Cora Jean, what do you want? I want you. Hello. Hello, Russ. Sheriff Mayberry, do you know what time it is? Just about midnight. I wanted to tell you I'm heading back home and wondered if you wanted to come with me. Now, Sheriff, I... Look, whatever you're doing, it isn't going to work. What is it you think I'm doing? You're trying to destroy my mind. No, Russ. I'm trying to appeal to your better nature. That's all. All right. All right. Whoever you are, whatever you are, Regardless of what this is all about, I'm wise to it. I won't crack. I won't break down. And soon, all of this, whatever it is, will be gone. So quiet the night. So still the stars. So silent. Go ahead, go ahead. It's all in my imagination. It's all in my imagination. Go ahead. Why didn't you tell me? Tell you what, Sybil? About the poem. The poem? Why didn't you tell me that... Well, the girl who wrote it comes from your hometown. Oh. Benton's Corners. Well, it's just a coincidence. And that you knew her. You knew her very well. Oh, I wouldn't say I knew her very well. But you must have. I'm, I'm so fascinated by that poem. I, I wanted to get a copy of the whole thing, and so... Well, I called the newspaper editor in Benton's Corners. Oh. Such a nice lady. She talked to me for hours, and she said that the poem was printed originally in her paper and that the title was To Russell. <laughs> you must have known her. Well, yes, I knew her. Were you in love with her? In love? Oh, you can tell me. It doesn't matter. It all belongs to the time before you met me. Were you in love with her? No, no, but she... She was very romantic. Well, tell me about her. What was she like? Well, I don't know. She was, she was just some girl. I, look, I'm, I'm sick of talking about her, Sybil, and that, and that silly poem. Now, you remember you wanted a list from me. A list? Yes, of guests I wanted to have for the wedding, and I said I didn't want to. Well, you reminded me, the uh, editor of the Benton's Corners Chronicle, the one you spoke to, she's a lovely lady, uh, Margaret Hennings Witherspoon. I'd like to invite her. I... Sybil? We'll talk about it, Russell. Darling, are you all right? Oh, I'm just a little bit tired. I... I'd better get to bed early. Oh, Sybil, you're angry. No, I'm not angry. But I... I, I don't want to leave like this. Like what? Well, as if, as if something's wrong. I mean, you're annoyed because I, I, because I didn't want to talk about that silly poem. I'm not. I say you are. Well, suppose I am. Tell me why. Well, that's just it. I don't know why. Oh, Russell, please, please, everything will be all right in the morning. Myself. It was that poem, that poem, that stupid bit of doggerel. How quiet the night. How still the stars. How silent the world below. How mute the breeze. How calm the trees. Cora Jean. Why are you always so alarmed, so surprised to see me, Russell? I don't believe it. I don't believe you're here. You must believe it. I'm all you've got now. Say what you like. I won't lose my grip. Your grip? On what? Reality. Oh, what's reality? Reality is a girl named Sybil Malone. Forget she has a hundred million dollars. She's a girl of many moods. And she doesn't love you anymore. That's... 
That's a lie. You mean it doesn't happen? <laughs> Your own words, Russell. You fall in love, you fall out of love. You don't control it. She is all gossip. And when you shouted, I'm sick of that silly poem, you broke the spell. That's not true. Oh, Russell, it's over in your heart. You know it's over. <laughs> you killed me for nothing. No, no, I didn't kill you. You see, you're still alive. You killed me, Russell. I killed you, but you're not dead enough. I buried you, but not deep enough. I'm dead, Russell. Dead. No. You're alive. Still alive. Hi, Russ. Ah, Sheriff. Yes, yes. You're just the man I want to see. You mean you want to come back with me? I don't have to. You see, I didn't kill her. Russ. No, listen. No, listen. You see, I'll admit it. I wanted to kill her. I drove her out to the spot, but I didn't hit her hard enough. She's still alive. Come on. Come on. I'll show you. I'll show you. Sure, Russell. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I'll get that for you. Yes, thank you. Hello. Oh, I wanted to speak to Russell. Who are you? An old friend, ma'am. Uh, just a minute. Russ? Huh. Huh. Russ? Huh. <clears throat> Hello, ma'am. I guess he can't talk right now. Can I take a message? Well, just tell him that I... I was acting silly and that we should never part with a quarrel and that I love him very much and... I'll tell him myself tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye, ma'am. Russ, that was... So quiet, the night. It's Cora Jean. She's talking to us, reciting her poem. So still, the stars. The poem she wrote for me. Don't you hear? Sure, sure, I hear. How silent. The world below. Well, the world didn't remain silent when Russell confessed. There was a clamor for a trial, and there was a verdict, and Russell was declared hopelessly insane. However, Sybil stood by him. She visits him every day and recites poetry. Most of it from an anthology of the poems of Cora Jean Buxton, who, as it turns out, has become quite famous in death. I'll be back shortly. The sounds in the night. The voices in the night. The songs of the night. How can we hear, how can we see what isn't there? Well, it's a question that deserves to be raised, but it certainly should not be dismissed as the imaginings of the neurotic or the demented. After all, if you see what eludes me, who is to say which of us has the firmer grip on reality? Our cast included William Redfield, Patricia Elliott, Marion Seldes, and Court Benson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. What about the dame? What dame? You said there was a dame in the store. That's right, there was. I didn't spot her at first, but uh, since she's seen the whole thing, I uh, had to take care of her, too. And you did? I told you she's dead. Well, that's what I told the boss last night. So this morning, he wants to know... Why don't it say nothing about her in the paper? What do you mean? It's got to say, hand me that. Yeah, go ahead, pal. Where does it say one word about the dame? But, but I got her. I know I got her. Then why wasn't it reported? They can't keep a thing like this out of the press. You missed her. That's what you did. You missed the clean. No, I wasn't ten feet away from her, and I don't miss... I could even hear her go, Ugh, when the first bullets hit her. She's dead, I tell you, Chappie. She's dead. Okay, Mule. Just answer me one question. Where's the body? This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.
The preceding program was broadcast with the permission of the Columbia Broadcasting System.